Assessment for Graduate Students by Ashley Kane, Michaela Campbell, Amanda Gamboa, and Tabitha James. Here is a look at our outline. First, we'll start off with an introduction and let you know exactly what burnout is. Description of the population, purpose for the study, historical perspective, assessment, basic concepts, statistical concepts, use of the assessment, evaluation of the assessment, and last but not least, the summary and conclusion. What is burnout? Now, I know you may be thinking, what is BAGS? BAGS is the Burnout Assessment for Graduate Students. It was created by students at Texas A&M University Commerce in order to aid in the improvement of mental health services to graduate level students. Why is it important? Graduate students experience many of the same stresses present in the professional field they are entering with a smaller sense of self-accomplishment. Katrina Maslach expressed emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, and a low sense of personal accomplishment as being the driving catalyst to emotional burnout. Her studies also revealed that there is a high potential of burnout for graduate counseling students. Now we will discuss our population for our study. The assessment is to be tested on the graduate students in the Texas A&M University Commerce Counseling Program. The student population varies in regards to gender, age, race, years of study, source of financing, whether it be government budget or self-financing, employment status, hometown, current GPA, and the amount of time they contributed to their studies. Let's discuss the historical perspective of burnout. In the 1970s, researchers began to view burnout as a serious mental condition which affected individuals' ability to complete tasks. Historically, the concept of burnout has only been studied in human service professions because of the emotional capacity required to help people with severe, life-altering issues. More recently, it has become more apparent within academic settings. Maslach believed burnout was especially high in the human services field due to intense involvement with other people and the chronic stress that comes along with helping other people solve their problems in high pressure environments. Higher rates of burnout occur when there is an increase in stress due to overwhelming coursework and deadlines as well as an emotional drainage over an extended period of time. Burnout often occurs with people who are already vulnerable to mental health issues. In one study of over 3,000 international graduate students, 44% of students claimed to have mental health issues that significantly affected their well-being or academic performance. This trend of poor mental health among international students is reflected in wider graduate population. 
A study across 10 universities found suicide rates to be the highest among graduate students. While the exact cause of these suicides is unknown for each individual, it is clear that there is a mental vulnerability in the graduate level population for stress to produce harrowing effects. Dr. Nash Turley, an evolutionary ecology researcher, believes that mental health issues are the biggest barriers to success among graduate students. Additionally, burnout has considerable overlap with depression as both share the common core symptoms of exhaustion. The rates of burnout present, present in graduate level students and workers is shown in a study done with Noslodge burnout inventory. The study accessed human service workers by measuring three areas, emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, and personal sense of accomplishment. According to the study, postgraduates and young professionals in the human services were found to have more emotional exhaustion and a smaller sense of accomplishment than people farther along in their careers. Further, postgraduates were found to score higher than any demographic on the level of involvement they have in their field, leading to burnout more quickly than human service workers without postgraduate work. The fact that older human service workers experience burnout at smaller rates indicate the burnout in graduate students can be addressed early on and with proper coping skills. The BAGS is an important assessment tool to identify burnout specifically in graduate students with the intention of spreading awareness to students which may quell their belief that their situation is an unending process that the individual is apt to fail. Basic concepts. The burnout assessment for graduate students is a standardized, structured psychological test measuring the state behavior of burnout and the severity of the burnout. It has uniform scoring and interpretation system and reliable internal structures that make it ideal for collecting qualitative data to find normative values for burnout in large populations. This assessment was created to be administered to a graduate student in the master's counseling program after the initial intake to support the counselor's observations and aid in diagnosis. It also helps graduate students label and categorize their feelings and set the framework towards becoming successful in their academic pursuits and ultimately their intended careers. The formal test is modeled after the State Trade Anxiety Inventory, which is the STAI, a non-validated burnout assessment offered by online resource mind tools. It contains only 15 burnout present statements for the test taker to rate from not at all, to very often. The 15-question non-validated burnout assessment was a starting point with statements such as, I feel run down and drained of emotional energy, included with similar ideations in bags. The Moslatch burnout inventory was comparative, comparatively more comprehensive and detailed with three different general scales for measurement, emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, and personal accomplishment. Following the 22-question structure of the MBI, the bags developed into a 22-question forced choice structure on a five-point Likert scale. Additionally, some symptoms measured in the mass latch, such as personal accomplishment and exhaustion, were considered and applied to the symptoms measured in the bags for a wider scope of examination. Modeling the dual focus perspective of the STAI, there are two distinct forms for BAGS. Form A measures whether a person is, is experiencing burnout, and Form B measures to what extent or degree of severity a person is experiencing burnout. The test taker is able to score their assessment by hand. The interpretation and diagnosis can be determined by the test administrator as the BAS is a preliminary assessment tool aimed at identifying symptoms of burnout prior to therapeutic intervention. So the BAGS uses an interval scale to measure burnout present and burnout absent statements. Here on the right, we do have a sample of the BAGS that shows a burnout um, absent statement. I feel like I'm on the right track in my graduate program. 
And over here we have the interval scale with equal intervals increasing in magnitude. And this will um, let the test taker rate the truthfulness of that statement for them, with one being never and five being always, and the numbers in between increasing. So this will make it very easy for researchers and counselors to find normative values and so that they can compare individual scores, raw scores, to each other very easily. And to find the normative values for the bags, we recommend calculating the mean and median for a graduate population that it's administered to. If you have a large population of graduates, um, we recommend dividing the population into three distinct groups. The first testing group should be students with zero to two years of experience in graduate school. The second group should be students that have been in the program two to four years. And the third group should be students in the program for plus years. And to calculate the mean of each group, one would find the frequency of distribution of the scores, calculate the sum of the raw scores, and then divide that sum by the number of raw scores in that group. And if the sample size is too small, then we recommend using the median of the group, which would just be the 50th percentile of the raw scores in each group. And that will give you some normative values to start comparing your own client's scores to other people's. But if you want to see how a client scores compares to the mean or median, then you can um, see the measures of variability, which is the standard deviation and the range. And the standard deviation just determines the average amount that each score deviates from the mean, while the range is the largest score subtracted from the smallest score. So researchers can see the range of all the raw scores. In order to see the range and standard deviation on a graph, the researchers should de develop a, a bell curve. If the mean, median, and mode have the same value, then it will be a normal bell curve with the highest point of the curve in the middle of the graph. If the central tendencies have different values, then the curve will not be centered and it will veer to the left or to the right. So when comparing individual scores to normative values, the counselors will know the percentage of other test takers that fell a certain amount of points away from the mean score when using a bell curve. And also you can see the z-score and the t-score to see how the client um, compares to the mean of the population. The farther um, a z-score is from zero, the farther away a client's raw score is from the average raw score of the population. And once you find the z-score, you can calculate the t-score by multiplying the mean of the t-score by the z-score, then adding the standard deviation, and that will give you the t-score. However, for the bags, a high t-score on form B of the bags indicates a greater severity of client anxiety and stress, which could be due to other mental health factors, and a low T-score on Form B would actually be what indicates burnout. So in order to determine if the client is experiencing any level of burnout on Form A, it is important to take the mean or median of the population tested and calculate a, a cut score, and the cut score will help the counselor determine if the client score warrants a diagnosis or a formal treatment plan, or if the graduate student is impaired from doing their work. So a counselor really needs to know their client in order to determine the proper cut score for their social context and their demographic. So to find the uh, validity and reliability of the bag tests to even be used by counselors, we do need to find the correlation coefficient. And the higher the correlation coefficient, the higher the validity and reliability. And to test for reliability, we recommend comparing the bags to other established burnout inventories like the MBI. 
and this will give a really clear picture of the reliability of the burnout if it has similar correlation to the MBI, if it has high correlation to the MBI. To test for validity, we recommend doing the CVR approach, which is to have professional experts on burnout rate each item on the bags as essential, useful but not essential, or not necessary in measuring symptoms of burnout. And the amount of essential and useful ratings are plugged into a formula to calculate the CVR for each item in the bags assessment. And the positive coefficients show a more valid measurement while the items with negative CVR show a non-valid item on the bags. So in order for This assessment is meant to be used on graduate students experiencing signs of mental distress due to a perceived state of burnout from long-term education endeavors. The bags will attempt to normalize the graduate student's experience and potentially relieve them from feeling like they are off course or unique in their feelings of exhaustion and lack of motivation. The bags only requires the test taker to have a fifth grade reading level. As you can see, the instructions over here are simple. Read each statement and determine on a scale of one to five how you currently feel. In form B, read each statement and determine on a scale of one to five how you generally feel. Graduate students who suspect they are experiencing burnout should have access to the test online or receive the test from an on-campus counselor. Graduate students often report feeling mental distress associated with burnout early on in their graduate program, particularly if they transition into a master's program immediately following the undergraduate years. Burnout experienced early on in graduate students has the potential to increase in severity as the program advances. The BAGS attempts to recognize symptoms of burnout as well as the extent to which the individual is experiencing the effects of burnout. As you can see, um, Form A at the top says report how you currently feel. Form B is report how you generally feel. So Form A is meant to assess if there are any uh, symptoms of burnout at all present, and Form B is meant to, meant to assess the severity of the burnout. After the administration of bags, either the individual who is self-reporting or the therapist should calculate the scores provided by the student. High scores on Form A indicate burnout is being experienced as a result of school stress, while low scores suggest that any perceived stress does not originate from school obligations. However, high scores on Form B emphasize severe levels of general stress and anxiety, and low scores are the ones that indicate the potential for burnout and how severe it is. And it provides an early window for anticipation and intervention and is meant to aid in the forming of a treatment plan. Low scores on both forms may necessitate mediation to prevent an increase in feelings of burnout, while high scores will illustrate the need for immediate attention and care. So in order for a counselor to know how much the bags can benefit their client, we must weigh the pros and cons of the assessment in a fair way. Over on the pro side, we do see that the bags does meet ACA ethics standards for section E1A and E1B of the Code of Ethics. And these state that an assessment must be used for treatment planning, and the counselor must also respect the client's right to know their results and, recommend, and recommendations in an understandable way. The BAGS has an easy scoring and interpretation system that provides immediate test results to the test taker, 
along with a clear purpose and description of how the counselor can apply the test results to diagnose a client's problem. Further, a client can have immediate interpretation by being provided with the normative values to see how their score compares to the mean of the general population tested. Another way that the BAGS meets the ACA ethics standards is the language used in the assessment. It is concise and direct, and it is easy to comprehend for an individual who is self-reporting as well as trained therapist. For instance, Form A just states that the test taker must answer each item as it relates to current feelings, while Form B necessitates answering each item with how the client feels in general. These are very short and basic instructions that a client at a fifth grade le reading level can follow. However, on the con side, we do see that the BAGS does not meet the ACA ethics standards for sections E5B and E8. This says that an assessment must be adapted for multicultural clients. An assessment must be sensitive to cultural differences, and the counselor must consider the social context of the client taking the assessment to avoid misdiagnosing the symptoms. Statements on the bags like, sometimes I feel depressed and I feel whelm overwhelmed by my obligations may not be effective in getting all clients to answer honestly. If a client believes that feeling overwhelmed and hopeless are signs of weakness that should not be expressed, they may not be forthcoming and honest when addressing these items on the assessment. So without additional resources and further examination aimed at cultural factors, a counselor may risk misdiagnosing with the bags by not using their own clinical judgment of the student's cultural context. Additionally, burnout symptoms in general are very ambiguous. Symptoms like depression, hopelessness, and fatigue, which are, could be all a part of burnout, these symptoms could be present in a client for reasons other than burnout. When scoring this assessment, an administrator should note the dual focus of the assessment and both forms. Form A measures whether or not the individual is experiencing burnout as a result of extended periods of time committed to academic pursuits, while Form B measures the extent to which an individual is experiencing burnout. The structure of the statements in Form B present various symptoms that coincide with other psychological afflictions, such as anxiety and depression. Form A is required to form a correlation between depressive symptoms and the student's subjective experience with school. Low scores on Form A and high scores on Form B may alternatively indicate that the student is experiencing symptoms of depression unrelated to burnout or stress from the graduate program. A client could be potentially experiencing clinical depression or anxiety, a recent life change or trauma, or low self-esteem, leading to persistent feelings of inadequacy. However, if we have the assessment's moderate content validity score, it can be considered when deciding how relevant the BAGS is for the client. The client will, or the counselor will need to administer multiple assessments to test for other mental illnesses with similar symptoms to burnout to avoid misdiagnosing. So even if the client does not have a clinical mental disorder, the counselor still needs to know the client's um, external factors and life circumstances. The reason for this is because Burnout symptoms can change day by day. A student can feel really confident in their uh, ability to succeed one day and feel completely incompetent the next day. This could be due to symptoms occurring around project deadlines, right when you have a major uh, paper coming up. It could be many reasons going on in graduate school. And there may not actually be any burnout if the symptoms change that quickly and are so dependent on external uh, factors. For this reason, the authors of this assessment recommend that a counselor administer the bags once and consider the social context and life circumstances of their client to decide a treatment plan. Once they decided a treatment plan for burnout, they should then administer the test one month later to see if the symptoms are still present 
with the same amount of intensity. This could either A, show that the treatment plan has been working and the symptoms of burnout have improved, thus that is what the client was experiencing in the first place, or B, it could confirm that burnout is much more serious and intense and long-term, and it could confirm the results from the first testing. Of course, with reliability and validity testing, we could possibly find high internal consistency that would indicate that the BAGS test is very reliable when um, considering a client's scores. We could also find high construct validity because the BAGS was modeled after well-known and established burnout inventories like um, the MBI. Of course, down at the bottom here, we still have the limitations of self-report inventories in general. Counselors should know that self, all self-report inventories have limitations because, one, it requires the client to be very self-aware of their own symptoms, which some people are not. And two, some people may not answer truthfully because they feel ashamed of their own symptoms. So counselors should consider self-report inventories and the pros and cons of them in general, no matter the studies or the reliability and validity testing, validity testing that goes into the bags. This information will, all of this information together will help the counselor decide the benefit of the bags. So in conclusion, there are three main takeaways to take from this paper de describing the BAGS assessment. One, there are academic demands that make the graduate student population vulnerable to mental distress in general, whether that be another mental disorder like depression or anxiety or something other than burnout that's causing symptoms of burnout like fatigue and alienation from peers. And two, the bag should be administered when counselors know the social context of their client. In describing and evaluating the bags, we've seen that the bags is not sufficient enough to be administered solely for diagnosis describing the bags assessment. One, there are academic demands that make the graduate student population vulnerable to mental distress in general, whether that be another mental disorder like depression or anxiety or something other than burnout that's causing symptoms of burnout like fatigue and alienation from peers. Two, the bag should be administered when counselors know the social context of their client. In describing and evaluating the bags, we've seen that the bags is not sufficient enough to be administered solely for diagnosing burnout. Now, as we've seen, bags can be great in informing the diagnosis, but the counselor must also know what sort of external factors are in the client's life in order to decide if their symptoms are due to trauma, life changes, um, other mental disorders, or anything else going on in life besides academic pursuits. And three, there are really simple techniques that can be prescribed to help students cope with feelings of burnout. CBT is really helpful in helping students combat the thoughts and feelings that lead to them feeling fatigue, fatigued and discouraged about their graduate program. Other things like low intensity exercise and even rest from their graduate program can really help in their regular self-care routine to make sure they are staying aware of their symptoms and their mental needs.